The Project Grant Scheme is the National Health and Medical Research Council's largest annual research funding program. Each year, to enable the highest quality scientific applications to be funded, expert peers assess each application as part of the grant review panel process. Over six weeks from the end of July to mid-September, these peers, who are members of the research community, will gather to assess around 2,200 applications. This will involve approximately 37 panels, each with between 9 and 16 panel members. Panels will meet for approximately a week to assess around 60 applications after the not for further consideration process. After applications have been received in March, NHMRC's Assigners Academy members begin their task of identifying two expert external assessors to provide independent assessor reports for each application. Meanwhile, panel members receive their allocation of applications adjusted for conflicts of interest. A primary and secondary spokesperson will have been selected for each application. Their role is to assess the applications and score them across three criteria. Scientific quality, weighted 50%. Significance of the expected outcomes and or innovation of the concept, weighted 25%. And team quality and capability relative to opportunity, weighted 25%. Each panellist will have been asked to act as primary spokesperson for around 10 applications and as secondary spokesperson for a further 10. When reviewing applications with career disruptions, panellists take into consideration that career disruption including pregnancy, major illness and carer responsibilities can have long-lasting impacts on a researcher's career progression. These types of disruptions may not only impact negatively on publication rates, but can severely diminish opportunities such as the ability to present at conferences, or to establish an international reputation, or apply for funding. It can also make it difficult to obtain preliminary data for grants, or take on new students. Panel members need to consider the impact of a career disruption when scoring applications and should familiarise themselves with the instructions on career disruption that are provided on the NHMRC website. Applicants receive their primary spokesperson and external assessor's reports and are invited to provide written responses to these reports, the rebuttal process. The primary and secondary spokespersons then review the assessor's reports and the applicant's rebuttal before re-scoring the applications. With so many applications for each panel to review, early removal of the lowest scoring bottom half and thus the least competitive applications will make this task a little easier and allow panellists to focus on the most competitive applications. A list of applications is compiled by the NHMRC based on spokesperson scores and these are now considered Not for Further Consideration or NFFC. Prior to the meeting, each panellist is provided the list after conflicts of interest are considered. Each panellist has the opportunity to rescue one application from the NFFC list prior to the meeting. Any rescued applications will be assessed in full by the GRP. Each grant review panel is led by a neutral and independent chair on behalf of the NHMRC. Chairs are experienced researchers or senior NHMRC officers with extensive peer review experience. They ensure that no panellist exerts undue influence that all applications are treated fairly and they'll keep the process on time. Chairs also manage any conflicts of interest. They ensure all career disruptions are considered. They summarise the key review outcomes and they'll lead budget discussions. Assistant chairs will aid their chair and also summarise key points made by panellists, especially those which include changes to budgets. A high quality review process depends on collegial and professional behaviour. 
it is vital that panellists declare any personal or professional relationships or institutional affiliations that could unduly influence an application. The confidential nature of the process must be maintained at all times and in perpetuity. Should any contentious issues arise that require assistance to resolve, chairs and panellists can obtain information and guidance from senior NHMRC officers. A review time of up to 25 minutes per application should ensure enough time to consider all applications over five days. The cycle of an application in the grant review panel process starts with the chair announcing the app ID, title, CIs, their institutions and any conflicts of interest. Once all conflicted panel members have left the room, the chair will announce the scores from the primary and secondary spokespersons. The primary spokesperson will read aloud the applicant's brief description of any career disruptions listed in the grant proposal and they'll discuss the application, focusing on its strengths and weaknesses in relation to the three specific assessment criteria. They'll also note any other relative to opportunity considerations. The secondary spokesperson presents a report on the external assessments and the applicant's response to the assessor's comments. They may also briefly comment on the assessment criteria, but will not reiterate the primary spokesperson's comments. Following discussion by the primary and secondary spokespersons, the application is then discussed by the whole GRP. The Chair will invite all members to comment on the application and raise any issues they may have. Once the Chair is satisfied that all panel members have had the opportunity to provide comment on the application, the primary and secondary spokespersons will then reveal their final scores, between 1 and 7, in all three assessment criteria. It should be noted that as a result of the panel discussion, these scores may be different from those announced at the introduction of the application. The Chair will ensure that the scores for each criteria are a true reflection of the comments from both spokespersons. All panellists, including primary and secondary spokespersons, will then complete score sheets for the application and forward them to the Secretary, who will enter them into a database and announce the final scores to the Grant Review Panel. When the application has been reviewed and scored, the panel will begin budget discussion only if it has an overall score in the top half of Category 5, which is 5.001 or above. Budget discussions for New Investigator, Cancer Australia Young Investigator and Electromagnetic Energy applications will occur for all applications scoring a category score of 5 or above, which is 4.501 and above. All applications on the Indigenous Grant Review Panel, or IGRP, with an overall score in the top half of Category 4, which is 4.001 or above, will also have a budget discussion. The Chair will ask the secondary spokesperson to lead the budget discussion and provide suggestions for items to be supported and those for which support is not recommended. This will include the duration of support, which can be any whole period year up to five years. It should be noted that for all applications, it is the responsibility of the applicants to make an appropriate case for all funding requests. Failure to do so may result in items being removed from requested budgets. NHMRC encourages support of highly innovative ideas. At any stage during the GRP, panels should consider nominations for the Marshall and Warren Award. This award recognises applications that are considered highly innovative, that may be high risk, but which may also offer the prospect of significant gains in new knowledge and or concept development. Each grant review panel can choose to ultimately nominate just one application for this award, but it should be noted that the application must have a category score of 4 or above. During all GRP discussions, an independent observer, a highly respected volunteer representing the broader community, may be present to listen to the GRP process for short periods. 
They will report daily to the CEO or senior NHMRC staff and the GRP chairs. In addition, early career research observers and research administrative officers may also be present as an introduction to peer review at NHMRC. Towards the end of each day's deliberations, a reconciliation of applications reviewed will take place. This process gives GRP members an opportunity to raise any significant concerns regarding applications that have been reviewed throughout the day. After the GRP meetings conclude, scores will be linearised within each GRP. All applications with a category score of 7 or 6 are automatically recommended for funding. The same proportion of applications with a category score of 5 across all GRPs will also be recommended for funding. Funding recommendations based on these linearised scores are made to NHMRC's Research Committee, Council and ultimately the Minister for Health. Subsequent to ministerial approval, applicants are advised of their outcome through RGMS. This is a big year for project grants. 3,855 applications are being peer-reviewed. And as a researcher myself, I know the extraordinary effort that goes into planning research projects and preparing applications to stand up to the rigour of peer review. Our Assigners Academy has sent out about 15,000 invitations to independent expert assessors, asking them to peer review these 3,855 applications. At the NHMRC, we are immensely grateful for the efforts that assigners make to find two appropriate reviewers for each application, and then of course to the assessors themselves, who we know spend many hours on each application to provide a fair and considered review. In the coming weeks, I look forward to meeting the hundreds of grant review panel members who will meet here in Canberra. They've already worked very hard to review their panel's grants and to provide feedback to applicants and they'll then meet here to discuss and rank those grants. Anyone who's served on a GRP knows how seriously members take their responsibility both to applicants and to the sector through this intense process. I want to acknowledge that this is a very tough time for the health and medical research community. Growth in the medical research endowment account which pays for project grants has helped to build a vibrant research sector and as a result, demand for funding of high quality, internationally competitive research far exceeds our capacity to support it. This is very hard on applicants. It's also hard on assessors and GRP members who know that very tough decisions have to be made. Altogether, many thousands of researchers in Australia and overseas contribute to our annual cycle of grant reviews to help make the best possible decisions about the support of health and medical research and of researchers in this country. We can't thank them enough.